My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today um, I'm going to answer the age-old question of why do chains have high spots? So this is a bit crude, but I'm not going to spend forever doing this. It's actually better to do this um, with clean stuff and... Um, what was I going to say? Oh, clean stuff, and it's actually better to do it on the sprocket, especially if you can find a uh, datum, a good datum. We're going to flip it around and try on this surface here. But for the time being, we can basically just look at this. This is a good way to have a look. I want to do it this way because this is where you can do it. You can set yourself up and do this. So what we've got is we've got a, um, a dial test indicator. I've been around it a couple of times. And the main reason why your um, chain has tight spots, it is not the chain. It is actually your sprockets. So everyone is you're under the assumption that your sprocket is exactly where it should be. Um, you know, in relation to all this. So what I've done is, is I've gone round and just spinning it once, I basically marked up where the high spots are. So there's one, two and three on the chain. The thing is, it's not actually the chain. This is a 42 sprocket. Camera only teeth it is 128, which means that that's nearly almost divisible by 40 teeth. So there should be three points on the chain. So what we're going to do here, is you can see that on this sprocket there are dots and this dot is the halfway between the high spot and the low spot so what i'll do is i'll just rotate it and then show you so you can see that we're hitting here and then once we get to this dot now keep in mind this is the high region of the sprocket so this is poking out higher in a sense it's off center and i marked this as one of the high spots and this was in the middle of the high spot so you'll see the numbers come round and you can see one on the high spot there and then as soon as we get to about there about here where this dot is in relation to the indicator you'll see that we're not touching anymore the indicator is not twitching and it says l there for low spot so this is the low spot and as soon as we get to about near that dot it starts to indicate again flicking backwards and forwards so you can see there we're in the high region and there's spot number two so you think, well, no, the high spots do line up with where you're saying, where it's indicating that it's high. Now, jumping off the rollers isn't exactly brilliant, but you get what I mean. You can see the purpose here. Now, now we get to there, that point there, we're now glancing blows and not touching. We're definitely not touching there. Middle of the low spot, there's a bit of a bounce there, and then all of a sudden we're getting back into this high region again. So you can see we're indicating there. And we're actually indicating, I don't want to touch the indicator. So we're indicating again there, we're in the high region. And then we're just, there we go, we're in the low region again. So we're looking at the distance between, so the, the sprocket is in a sense half and half. And then we rotate it, we're in the low region, we're not really indicating anything. We're getting little tiny little glancing blows, there's a blow, there we go. Now all of a sudden, our number one is at this transition. And that's the high. Remember, number one was originally there. And that's because 28 T, I think it's 28 uh, links. I'll check. I think it's 28 links in this chain. It's not entirely divisible by the 40. 120 would be not 128. So we're going to have an offset. And then we get into the low region and we rotate it. We're still in the low region. And then we're starting to bump again. Again, our number two is now on the transition between the two. So if we continue to rotate it, we're in the high region again, you can see it indicating as we go around and then we get to the, there we go, we've passed the transition now and now we're not really touching. As you can see, and now you can see our number three has shifted even more, it's now in the low region. So this is a point on the chain here when I was measuring you can't see it, but basically I've got a ruler set up. Let me just go and get my phone so I can take a picture of it. So you can see on here, this is how I was measuring my chain slack by basically just lifting the chain like so in my hand and then measuring it there like so. Some guy sent me a, a graph. I'll show you the graph. He was literally measuring the chain slack as he was going around and asking me this question. So there you go, there's number three. We continue to go around, we're back into the high region again. 
you notice we're always in that high region and then when we get to that point there we start to stop indicating and now we're in the low region and if you keep on going number one there you can see is in right in the middle of the bloody low region so we're not hitting really anything and then as soon as we get to that dot it starts indicating again indicating again indicating again and then it just trails off to nothing number two is now heading towards the center section of the low region and we just keep on going around we're indicating there we're in the high region again there's the transition there's number three still in the low we keep on going now we're indicating again about the same we're seeing the same kind of sweep number one has now gone into the high transition or it's starting to in the low indicating again number two it's losing ground into the low into the high again and number three is there in the high again so it's gone you see your chain is going from high to low high to low now you might think there's one tight spot well with a chain with four with 40 teeth and 128 teeth or 122 or whatever it is um because they're not perfectly divisible you will you know you're doing it by feel you're not measuring things you do it by feel so what this means is is that our um sprocket because our sprocket is basically there are holes in here and you know it kind of finds its place some of them have slight lips on <coughs> so your sprockets have obviously this recess here that usually sits on some kind of ring and then these holes here but the um hooks in a sense of the sprocket and this ring have to be perfectly concentric with each other the fact that you can rotate it doesn't matter it's how much is it going out of alignment so is the sprocket shifted to one side stuff like that and um, this ring you know these aren't tight fits they just basically bung on and if there's any deviation in there so basically if it's offset if it was sat like this and it was offset this way then obviously the chain is going to go tight here as this thing hold, rotates and it's going to go slack here tight here slack here and stuff like that the one of the problems is is it's very hard to get on this sprocket you would want to basically indicate on this interior surface here because it's full circle but the problem is i can't get anything in there i've been trying to get something in there i've got the verdict indicator take that off that magnetic base got this indicator here which has a little finger jobby I cannot get anything in there. Um, I might have to get a steric. Um, there's like a, 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 a levering arm you can stick in there. So that can kind of show us the uh, concentricity and stuff like that in a better way instead of rubbing on the outside links. But you can see after doing that multiple rotations in this video, you can see that it's quite consistent that the highs and the lows are where the highs and the lows are. So that's where chain slack... Um, Oh, well, that's why, sorry, your chain, where it goes tight and then it goes slack, stuff like that. If you have a horribly slack chain that it goes, as you rotate around, it goes horribly slack and then horribly tight, it's probably because your sprocket, the inner hooks of the sprocket and this circle might be cheap and shit, or maybe it's just sat on there, you know, incorrectly. How to rectify that is a massive pain in the ass because you have to be able to read a good datum and means having to put your chain on and stuff like that. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.